Good evening and welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. Well, we are back doing catamaran reviews. This time we're coming from the Annapolis Sailboat Show. And what we're looking for is a catamaran that is perfect for live aboard purposes. And if you watched the previous episodes, you know we got a guided tour of the Balance 526. We looked at the Balance 442 and we've looked at the exquisite X5 Plus. All of them get two thumbs up, very well suited to live aboards, but the price tag might be a little bit outside of what you can afford. Where you can save a few bucks is if you go with a more mass production builder, that would be the Lagoons, the Leopards, the Fontaine Bajos, and others. And in the last episode, we got a guided tour of the smallest of the Fontaine Bajot line, the Isla 40. And I was surprised with how much interior volume and comfort there is in just a 40 footer. But I feel it's still a little bit too small to be a full time liveaboard cruiser, especially if you want to cross oceans. So now we're going to move up to the 42 and see if that little bit extra size makes all the difference. So let's take that guided tour now with our host at the show, James Tiernan. Okay, we are back at the 2023 Annapolis Sailboat Show with James. You've seen him in two previous episodes where we talked about the Fontaine Bajot 40 and then the 42. Hello! <laughs> and now we're on the 47. James is going to take us through all the features. Again, his information is in the video description, so if we don't cover something that you have a question about, definitely reach out to James. He'll, he'll be more than happy to help. Go hey ahead. guys, so we're on my favorite boat of the whole line. So these days I'm torn between the 47 and the 51. I've had a lot of success with the 47, so I've spent a lot of time with this. I've got a lot of friends that own them. Me and my wife will be doing a sabbatical in the next year or two, and I'm pretty sure it'll be a 47 or a 51, but I think probably a 47. So today I'm going to show you why. Um, it's the perfect cruising boat. You know, it's, it's, it's big enough for a lot of space. And you're going to be comfortable for a long time, but it's not too big where you're uncomfortable, and it's going to be just wasted. Yeah, um, and the price is lower than a 51. And the price is <laughs> half a million dollars lower than a 51, so that helps too. Yeah. Um, and that's the best advice anyone can give anybody buying a boat, is buy the smallest boat you're comfortable with rather than the biggest boat you can afford. Right. I mean, um, and I think that's, for me, that's why the 47 really works. It's it's just the perfect size right. for me and Emily. Uh, so we'll start at the back here. So we'll start at the back. So on this boat, we have the hydraulic platform. You have the option for hydraulic davits or electric davits. Personally, I, I prefer the hydraulic platform. Uh, some of my cruisers before the davits. Uh, there's pros and cons to both. Um, but for divers or people that are going to be, you know, on anchorage for a long time, I think the hydraulic platform adds enough value to be worth the extra price and the extra weight. Okay. Um, what is the price? It's about thirty-eight thousand dollars. To go from the normal, standard davits to yes. this hydraulic. It, yeah. If you're um, a scuba diver, this is just my gut feel on it, and you're spending this much for a boat anyway, paying 38000 to be able to scoot your bum up on this and get in and out. And like you said on a previous video, grocery shopping. You pull up exactly. and you throw all your groceries on yeah. it, and you don't have to uh, jump out of the boat while you're also lifting groceries. So. Yeah, or for dog owners. So if you have a dog on board right. with you, that's what we will be doing. Yeah. To be able to get your dog on and off the dinghy is much easier on the platform right. than it is from the they, transom. They leave a faith down, yeah. yeah. Um, so as we're walking into the cockpit, we do the engines next. Should we, we do can, engines since we're here? Yeah. So since we're at the back, let's do engines next. So let's take a look at the engine room. Again, very nice. And so this one's Yanmar, not so this one is Yanmar. I've, I've mentioned on a few of my videos that you can do Yanmar or, or Volvo, and they're both great motors. I mean, they're the two main supplier of marine diesel uh, worldwide. Personally, I think I'd probably go with the Volvo. Mm. You'll notice that this is it, bigger. It's a bit bigger. Yeah. Um, they both have their strengths, they both have their weaknesses, but I think the fact that the Volvo is a bit smaller and a bit lighter is probably why I'd go with that, but the Yanmars are super solid too. You might not be able to answer this, but service issues, about the same Yanmar? Like it, they both have their issues. Okay. Yeah. One's I, not... One is not worse than the other, yeah, depends okay. who you talk to. I think the Yanmar, their Achilles heel is the sail drive seals. They fail more often than the Volvo. Okay. The Volvo issues have... Um, in the past been the MDI box, which is the ECU of the motor that's been known to fail. Um, so And the Volvo's lighter, so you got that feature too. If you're yeah. trying to keep the weight down then keep the weight down and keep the price down and keep the footprint of the motor down. Okay. Um, you just mentioned price, so the Volvo's less expensive than it's the M. About twenty percent less expensive. Okay. Yeah. Oh you sold me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But again, if I was given two boats in the morning and one in Volvo and one in Yanmar, it, I'd be happy with either. Yeah, you're not gonna. Yeah, you're not gonna not take a boat because it's already no. a Yanmar. If I had the choice, I would go with Volvo. But uh, this is nice. It's a nice big cockpit. Um, again, you have the option of the grill here. 
This this gentleman has actually gone with fully electric everything. So he's got an electric grill on the back, mm -hmm. fully electric galley, 3,000 watts of solar, 10,000 watts of inverter power, and a big lithium bank to support it. Mm, nice. Um, so this is the closest to hybrid that we have on the water in the US right now. So diesel motors and everything else is electric. You'll notice as you're looking through the cockpit here, you've got a fridge and you've got an ice maker. Yes. Yes. What he did on this, which I really love, is the cockpit table actually turns into a bed, so it folds down. Oh, really? Um, and I think the plan is to put a projector and have a <laughs> oh yes, and have a big screen aft, you so they can projector have movie, back here on the roof, so they can have movie nice oh, outside. Nice. That is nice. Which is definitely something I would do. You got a lot of lounging space. You also have the day bed up there too. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. and a little sleeping pad here. Yeah, very nice. So as we're walking through, again, I want to point out the helm station is, it's right here. You know, it's connected to the whole boat. Our plan is that our owners are going to cruise the world and sail the world. So having the ability to be at the helm station, but still connected and talking to the galley and the salon and everyone back here, hugely important. So you can see as you stand there, whether I'm in the cockpit or maybe I'm in, in the galley yep. making dinner or making coffee. Over sitting on the seat. I can still yep. talk to whoever's sailing the boat. Right. Um, Perfect. And then again, I talk about this in all my videos, the helm station is my favorite part of the boat. Um, it's connected, but it, it feels safe. You know, it is safe. I got this big fiberglass structure keeping me, keeping me in. I can see everything out this way. All my lines are lit right here. Um, and my, my, my favorite thing is when I go to dock the boat, I'm standing here and I'm looking where I'm going. You know, typically you're going to dock stern too. Mm -hmm. So right now I can see the port, the starboard side and the port side very easily. Mm -hmm. And I'm facing where I'm going. So I'm not thinking, you know, left is right, right is left. Yes. I'm looking, looking where I'm going. Um, so that's quite important. Mm -hmm. um, you can see where these two folks are at the upper deck area. Um, sort of seating and sun tanning. Exactly. Nice. So rather than, uh, and we get this question a lot, why don't we have the door forward? You know, that's a popular option on uh, some of our competitors' boats. The reason we don't have that, and it's, it's worth addressing, is that we have to add a lot of weight to support that opening door forward. Right. And we can't add that weight in our boats without really sacrificing our performance. Yes. So on our bigger, bigger boats, we can do it because we've got such a big load, load, load carrying capacity. On our smaller boats, we don't. We don't want to put that weight forward. So rather than doing that, we'll do this nice big upper deck area, right. which is a bit safer too. You don't really want to be sitting forward when you're offshore. You can spray. In spray, <laughs> and getting, yeah. getting a nice salt water shower. Yeah. You'd rather be up here. So quickly go check that out. Let me just open this up for you. This is the party area? This is the party area. And it's really where you're going to hang out when mom or dad is sailing the boat or whoever you can sit here talk to everybody and take the view in um, you'll notice on this boat we have Starlink mounted here oh nice yeah. um, it's becoming almost a standard option at this stage is Starlink um, and yeah, it's pretty much becoming standard on any boat yeah. uh, you'll notice this is the hard top option that's what I want yeah so we've done some custom solar here he's added as he's as he's got the boat um, which is really nice. Another thing is access to the sail. We've talked about that a lot in our other videos. You know, we're assuming this boat's going to be sailed by two people, so you don't want to climb up the mast to ever access the mainsail. So you have it right here at shoulder height. Yeah, that's good. Um, again, safety. Yeah, that's the good thing about the uh, kind of I call this the sport seat type, where it's, exactly. you're halfway up. Is now if you have a full flybridge steering station. Then your then your boom is way up in the air. Yeah. A higher center of gravity for sailing and harder to get at the sails. Yeah, well. you never want to watch someone climbing a big structure to get at the main <laughs> sail. Bouncy seas, no. Yeah. Excellent. So, so this one's got this guy's gone pretty good with the solar. He's got he's it down done the side. Three thousand watts of solar in three thousand watts on yeah. a forty-seven foot. Now that you have nice. the option of doing fully integrated solar, which is going to be soft, walkable solar. Right. We found that it's not as sort a, of like this one that's there. Yeah, right. We can do the whole boat with that, but it's just not as efficient as what this customer right. has done. So, if you're and more about aesthetics, it looks great. Right. If you're more about being practical, this is probably the way to do it. I think so too, because too, if you're putting it here, a lot of lines run on the decks. So you only have some space where you can put it, and then the problem is you're always being shaded by yeah. The boom you can see on the something. port side today we're already having shade, shade here. Shade issues, so. yeah. 
while back here, you're kind of out of the out of the way, less likely to good. You're going to get some shade, but not most. Not as much. You got probably four. If you add them all up, four of the cells are completely in the sun, and only one if you add up the two at the space of the two. Exactly. No, I like it. All right, let's go check out the inside. Let's, so again, we're at a boat show, so there's going to be people coming and going. Good and bad, though. I think it'll give you a good sense of the space and how big the boat is. Um, what I love about this the Tana 47 is the, is the galley. Um, not only do you have a lot of storage, but you have a little bit of a U-shape. So when you're an offshore sailing, you have something to grab onto and you're not totally... Um, mm -hmm. He's gone with induction and electric. That's what I would do as well. Um, and there's so many different options for the electric oven at the moment. You can do air fryer, steam, you name it. Something we haven't mentioned on any of the other episodes, but it's been all the boats, is I like the rounded edges of the yeah. cabinetry. There's yeah. no pointy corners you're going to hit on your hip or something. Exactly. So that's a that's a nice feature that I just, I've noticed, but I haven't said anything. And you got the double sink too. And one thing that it's, it's hard to notice from the videos, this is Corian. So Corian is actually something that you can sand and refinish. And you know, over the years, you're going to have some scuff marks and knife marks. So uh, it's something that's going to look good after five, six years sailing. Um, a lot of cold storage. Again, you have two big fridges here. Um, the salon area can be converted to a big double bed. And that, that drops down, right? It does drop down, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're now coming down into the owner's cabin, which is, I think, the best feature of the boat. It's wow. really, really big. Wow. Really big. Uh, yeah. You know, it's no, uh, two people crossing each other are not going to be a problem here. No. <laughs> so you get a full queen size bed with a three quarter cut out, so it's easy to make the bed. It's easy to get in and out without waking the other half. Um, Lights on either side with USB storage, you know, fans, nice natural ventilation, so two opening ports. That is nice. Um, and of course, you got the fan in the corner too. So a great place to spend a long time. If you need a spot to get out of the, if you have a bunch of people on the boat, this would be a good place to like just enjoy some comfort. It is, and you get a lot of privacy, so you can completely close this off. Your guests are on the other side, so you get a really private owner's cabin. Um, something that's hard to show in the video is the amount of storage in here. Um, but like Scott mentioned earlier, anytime you see one of these silver handles, you got storage. Mm -hmm. um, typically, we'll put in uh, a safe in this area, so you can keep your um, passports and money and watches. Yeah. Um, and then, as we go forward, I think you'll be pretty impressed with the shower and with the head area that's big it's really big a lot of countertop space yeah yeah and a lot of storage too so when you're oh those are deep yeah. they're real deep so all your makeup and different things and it's the whole way along yeah. and then lots of storage here as well here and here yeah so Nice big shower, lots of headroom, so you're not worried. You know, I'm 5'11", I still have a foot and a half maybe above me. Every one of the Fontaine Bajos we've been covering, I've always been like, I'm six feet, and I don't think I have to bend down for any room. No. So, so yeah. Um, one thing, and you'll notice on the, the next hull we go on to on the starboard hull, is access to the four-peak storage. Um, on a lot of the other boats, access is from deck only but being able to access it from the interior so when it's the rainy day and you're doing some odd jobs around the boat you don't have to get outside and get wet this is where your tools are so this you don't have to go outside to get exactly yeah. which is quite important yeah it is so again lots of storage lots of room not a bad place you're gonna you're not gonna be uncomfortable here when no. it's been a long time uh, which goes comes back to the the design purpose right fp build and design boats for living aboard. No, quick question. Like, I'm assuming that's true. If you're building the boat from the factory, you could probably opt for something other than a desk here if you wanted to put like a little settee sitting area? Or? So you can, but um, there's a production line where they'd build the boat. Right. And then when it comes off, there's the custom option line. So when it sits in the yard, that's when you decide what you really okay. want to, how you really want to finish. So if you're going to do something more than a desk, 
the best thing to do would be a, another storage area okay. and we design it with you to okay. um, what a lot of my customers have been doing is replacing this with an angle fridge freezer so you got cold storage in your city it, it, it's it's just a little bit wider mm -hmm. um, and it keeps drinks it, it can be fridge or freezer that's awesome yeah it works really good okay let's go see the guest side let's go take a look at the guest side all right, so now we're on the guest side. So on the guest side, before we get into either cabin, so you got cabin aft and cabin forward, we have this pantry area, which we're typically using for your washer dryer. And then when you order the boat, you have a chance to do a ventless or vented washer dryer. Go vented. The vented, your clothes are going to be dry quick. Yeah. Ventless, it's going to take a little yes, while. I've, so I've experienced that. Yeah. We tend to advise people to do vented. Uh, the reason not to do vented would be because we have to add another hole in your boat, so we do need a vent in the in the cockpit. So some people would rather not have that. But um, I will it, attest to uh, I was on a boat for a long passage and it wasn't vented, and we almost always air dried our air clothes dry, exactly because they would never come out completely dry in the in, or you'd run the dryer forever to get forever. Them dry. yeah. yeah. So at that stage, I would say just get a nice washing machine and and then and just commit air to drying. Dry. Yeah. yeah hang up your clothes outside. So it's a simple option, but the reason why the Tana 47 is probably the boat that I'll end up buying is actually this room. So you can walk forward into your four peak access. So this nice. can turn into a workshop, which I think most cruisers will appreciate the, the days that it's stormy and rainy that you have spare time. Mm -hmm. You're going to start doing the boat projects that you've been putting off. So being able to get to your tools, get to your spare parts and not go outside um, or when you're offshore. So this is one of my favorite features of the boat. I know it's simple and maybe not. But it's functional. But it's functional. Yeah, because the people don't think about that. No, they really don't. But when you're on board and you have to get out and go through the rain to get into and the climb into a hatch yeah. to get. Yeah. So simple things. But this is probably the reason I would buy the Tana 47. Um, Again, the uh, Janus approved walk around bed. Exactly. With the nice uh, view when you wake up in the morning. That's yeah, really nice. You know it's going to be a good day when you wake up too. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the first thing you see. Hatch for uh, airflow and, and also the port light here for more airflow. So. Yeah. Uh, and, and lots of storage. Again, like I said, it's hard to see. We can do a TV that is installed in here and it's on a motor so it rises up so when you're in bed at night or in the morning you can still watch your yeah. TV That's shows. Nice feature. Um, on this boat we do have a separate head and a separate shower for each cabin. So I'm going to go this way and show you that. Um, separate head and then a separate shower and again more than enough headroom so for the tall guys out there you're you're not gonna you're not gonna be stuck yeah very nice um, most of our heads these days we're doing uh, salt water and fresh water with a valve to switch between the two yes so when you're in the marinas you're using fresh water when you're offshore you're using salt water and you can switch between the two so now we're in the aft guest cabin. Again, you can see the size of the bed is quite substantial. It's a queen size bed. Again, with the Janus approved. Janus approved. <laughs> Janus approved walk arounds. So easy to get in and out of, easy to make the bed in the morning. Um, things like Scott mentioned earlier, lots of natural ventilation. We have installed fans too. Uh, and of course it's air conditioned. Um, what most people will appreciate is there's USB chargers right beside the, the lights. In the lights, eh? Yeah, so. Uh, you're always connected um, and lots of storage too. Um, a really cozy cabin to be in when it's rainy and stormy outside. Is there anything under the bed? There is, yeah. Like I said before, lots and lots of storage. Oh yeah, um, that's good. Hard to kind of demonstrate in a video, yeah, you know. but like I said, once you get on and start opening things up and pulling things apart, you'll really start to appreciate how much storage there is. So we've seen everything we could see, at least at this boat show with everybody on, of this 47-foot Montana Bajo. Very impressive. Of course, the question everybody always asks is, how much for a properly outfitted liveaboard 47? So for a liveaboard 47, so we're adding two, 3,000 watts of solar, bigger inverters, lithium, you're going to be over, just over 1.3 million. Uh, somewhere between 1.3 and 1.4 million. Um, depending on your final, final outfit. But um, the best thing about it is the resale value, right? So it's just an investment short term um, and you're gonna get everything you want. Like I said, this is my favorite boat. It's probably the boat I'll end up in in the next two or three years with my wife. 
to do a quick sabbatical maybe at the Caribbean. Um, but give me a call. I mean, I can send you the price, and you'll see base prices advertised at nine hundred thousand. But it's not really. Yeah, you're going to need a lot more. To you're going to need a lot yeah. more than that. So you got to. They they probably have to price it as what if you somebody wants it in charter. They're not going to put all this extra solar. Exactly. And all that other stuff. Exactly. So, yeah. So don't get too confused when you yeah. see prices all over the place. Um, I've sold a lot of these boats, and they've always been right around one point three million, one point four million. So. Excellent. Well, thanks a lot, James. It was a great boat. And also, as I've said before, his information will be in the video description. Reach out if you have any questions. Perfect. Well, right. thanks, Craig, and I appreciate it. Thanks. Well, there you go. There's the Fontaine Bajot Tana 47. I'd say very impressive. Like all the Fontaine Bajots, it feels bigger inside than the actual waterline would indicate. This feels more like a 50 to me. And I got to say, this is without a doubt something I could see myself crossing oceans on. As you've seen in my previous episodes, the 42 and the 40 I felt were just a little bit too small for that. Great for liveaboard coastal cruising. Would I want to cross an ocean on a 42 or a 40 foot boat? Eh, probably not. But this boat checks all the boxes and I think I'd be very happy with this boat. Okay, I'll put the spec sheet up on the screen so you can check it out. This is the layout of the salon. As you can see, there's plenty of room for entertaining, dining, whatnot on this 40. No questions. Then I'll put up the cabin layout. The Maestro version is the one I would go with, which is the three cabin where you have one entire hall as the owner's suite. That's the way I would go. More storage, more room, bigger head, room for laundry, maybe even a fridge, like you said, down there, a little drink fridge for in your room, which would be cool. Lots of privacy. If you have other guests on board, you can close it off and uh, have your own sanctuary. And again, James did say the price for a pretty well kitted out one. He said one, between 1 1.3, 1.4 million dollars which is a lot of money, don't get me wrong, but then he did hint that the next model that you're gonna see in the next episode, the 51, is about half a million dollars more. That's a substantial jump in price. So unless money is no option for you, I'd probably go with this 47. It seems like a much better deal than to spend half a million dollars to go up to the 51 that we are gonna see in the next episode. Put what you think in the comments. Does this feel like a perfect size for liveaboard? I think so. Now, would I love a 51? Sure, but you know, half a million dollars more? Eh, I don't know, we'll see. So there you go, there was the guided tour and my thoughts on the Fontaine Peugeot Tana 47. Again, I think it would be a perfect liveaboard cruiser. Let me know in the comments what you think. Hopefully you found it informative. If so, show the channel some love by giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, this is Craig signing off, wishing you safe cruising. <laughs>